I love our smart blinds. They're probably the second most used smart devices in our house after our smart lights. Every morning when the first one of us walks out of the bedroom into a hallway, the blinds in the common areas of the house automatically open up. Then after breakfast, when we walk into our home offices, the blinds in there open up as well. Later in the day, 20 minutes before sunset, the blinds close themselves and the lights fade on, getting the house ready for nighttime. If you've been watching my videos for a while, then you know that I've recently bought a new house and that I'm in the process of turning it into the best dang smart home that ever was. In my old house we were renting, so it wasn't really possible to put up new blinds, and I was really looking forward to getting stuck in and doing it properly in the new place. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I went about automating my blinds. I'll show you the different blinds and devices I researched, what I ended up choosing to use in my house, and I'll show you how I've set up some of my automations as well. My house exclusively has these roller blinds, but I'll also go over some other options for different types of blinds and curtains if you happen to have something different. Let's take a look! When I first moved in, I had originally planned to replace all of my blinds with hardwired smart versions. I'm trying to avoid using battery devices where I can in the new house. I started researching motorized blinds and found out that it was actually quite difficult to find any that were hardwired into power. I then had a chat with my electrician and realized that getting electricity up to the top corners of all of my windows was going to cost quite a bit of money and meant my dot and dabbed walls would have to be probably ripped apart to run the cable. That wasn't going to go down too well with my partner. If I was building a new house and was able to put the electrical cabling into the walls before the plaster went up, then I would have tried a little harder to find a hardwired solution but I pretty quickly abandoned that idea and started looking for battery powered options. The main requirements I had were that they worked with Home Assistant and had a really long battery life. I didn't want to have to recharge them every week or so. Someone then told me that IKEA makes decent smart blinds that work with Home Assistant using Zigbee, but after doing some more research, I'd come across numerous comments saying that the Zigbee connection was unreliable and sometimes the blinds didn't do what they were told. I've not personally tested them, so I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I couldn't risk investing in replacing all of my blinds only to find out that they didn't work as expected. I'd also heard good things about Lutron blinds, but they're not that popular here in the UK and they're pretty expensive, so I gave them a miss as well. As always, I then went to the Home Assistant Integrations website and searched for compatible blind integrations. This is pretty much how I start researching a lot of my tech purchases. I noticed that a lot of them were all using the same motion blinds integration and that it was a local push integration, which is great because it will still work if the company goes out of business or if my internet connection goes down. One of these companies was called Block Blinds, which had actually been recommended to me before by some friends of ours, so I took a look at some of their offerings. They do a cool blackout blind that completely blocks out the light, something that I really like. Unfortunately, when I priced up the blinds that I'd need, it came out to over £6,000. That's twice the price of their non-motorized versions, and there was no way I could justify spending that much money. There wasn't anything wrong with the blinds that I already had. They worked fine, they felt high quality, and they blocked out the light really well. So I went back to the drawing board again and looked for a new solution to retrofit my old blinds and make them smart. In my old rental house, I used some Zemi Smart battery-operated blind controllers. These attach to the side of your window, and you put the blind chain or string into these attachments, which turn around opening and closing your blinds. They were awesome. They used Zigbee, and they never once failed to open or close when they were told to, and the battery lasted for ages, maybe six to eight months before they needed to be recharged. It was the perfect solution for a rental property because you could stick them to the wall with double-sided tape and take them down again when I moved out. The problem with them, though, is they just look a bit shit. You have this box sitting on the side of your window, and then when someone came over to your house and tried to open the blinds, they'd often just reef the chain through the device, messing up your open and close positions, or breaking the opener. This isn't what I wanted in my new house. But I was really happy with how the Zemi Smart devices worked, so I took a look at what other products they had available. I saw that they had these cool motors that actually went inside the roller blind tube. This way you wouldn't be able to see the motor itself, so it would look a lot better than my old solution and the big tube motor meant that it could hold a big battery inside. I reached out to a contact that I had at ZemiSmart and shamelessly asked them if they could send me one of these motors for free to test out, which they kindly did. Thank you ZemiSmart, I really appreciate it. Make sure you order one that fits inside your blind tube, which you can measure by pulling the blind down and yanking the bit with the chain attached to it out of the end. In the box you get the blind motor, the brackets you need to mount it to your wall or ceiling, 
a USB-C charging cable, and if you ordered it, a remote control. I'd strongly suggest ordering at least one remote control, because it lets you set it up without having to pair it with the Zemi Smart Hub or app. The remote control is also great to have around in case visitors want to use your blinds and can't figure out how to open or close them because there's no chain anymore. Installing them was pretty easy. You just pull both ends off the blind and slide the motor into the tube. I had a bit of trouble getting it in because the rubber turning thing at the end wasn't the right shape to fit my blind. I did a little uh, surgery with a Leatherman and cut it to fit. If I had a 3D printer, I probably could have printed the perfect bit. Maybe. I don't know. That's something I'm looking forward to learning more about in the future. Then it was just a matter of remounting the blind to the window and testing that it worked. Next up, I followed the instructions and used the remote to set the top and bottom limits of the blind motor. You need to do this once for every blind that you install so that the motor knows when to stop turning as it reaches the top or the bottom of the window. It was pretty easy to do with these Zemi Smarts, unlike the absolute nightmare of a process you have to go through with the chain motor. Once the limits were set, I was able to pair them directly to my home assistant via my USB Zigbee dongle and they were good to go. I was so happy with this device that I ended up buying another 10 of them with my own money, and it was a fraction of the cost that I would have spent having to replace all of my blinds. I also love the remote control as it makes it easy for guests and visitors to open the blind without having to use a voice assistant or an app. I've been using them for over three months now and they're really good. They've not missed a beat, but I have had to charge the battery on a couple of them in that time though, which was a bit annoying. The ones that are moving some of the bigger blinds that I have around here seem to go through the power a lot quicker than the other ones, which makes sense. To make it easier to charge them, I bought this 3-in-1 USB charger and some really long USB-C cables. That means I can charge all of the blinds at once on these windows without taking the blinds down. And I've really only had to do it once for a couple of blinds in the last three months. If you don't have roller blinds, then Zemi Smart has some other options available for different types of blinds and for curtains, and you can get most of the products in either a Zigbee or Wi-Fi versions. SwitchBot also make a great curtain opener that I've tested out in the past, and some really good blind openers as well. Check out those if you're in the market, they also work great with Home Assistant. I did end up buying one of those block out blinds for here in my office. I needed something that would completely block out the light for when I filmed YouTube videos. I didn't buy the motorized version because it was twice the price and I figured I could reuse one of the Zemi Smart blind chain controllers that I already had. It was only for my office, so I don't particularly care if it looks rubbish or not. Sadly, the Zemi Smart had trouble opening and closing this large blind, and the chain kept slipping and it was making a horrible noise no matter what attachment I used on it. I then remembered that Akara also make a device like this, so I reached out to them and see if they'd send me one to test. What's the point of being a YouTube influencer if you can't be cheeky and ask for things to be sent to your house for free? They graciously accepted, thank you Akara, and they sent me their E1 Zigbee Roller Shade Driver. You get everything you need in the box to set it up, and it paired perfectly with Home Assistant using Zigbee. I've been using this blind motor for a couple of weeks now, and it's been much better at opening and closing this big blind. I think it's because the chain attachment that comes with the Akara is capable of taking two balls at once. <laughs> Sorry. So now all my blinds are connected into Home Assistant and it's time to start creating some automations. Before I do that, are there any blind or curtain devices that you guys are using in your homes? Let us know in the comments below. I always enjoy learning what else is out there that I've not come across yet. And whilst you're down there, please also consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a like. It really helps me out. Thank you. Right, so the first automation that I made for my blinds was having them close each day at sunset. This didn't turn out to be ideal, because by the time the sun is actually set, it's already really dark outside. So instead, we opted to have the blinds close 20 minutes before sunset each day, which works a lot better. The automation also turns on the lights at the same time, so we're not stuck in the dark. I love this automation. When I come down from my office at the end of the day, I don't need to bother closing any of the blinds or turning on the lights. And in summer, when it's daylight outside, much later, the lights come on as the blinds close just as we're having dinner. It's just magical. I use Home Assistant for all my automations, but you should be able to set this same sort of automation up in a similar way no matter what platform you're using. I've also written articles for all of these automations on my Home Automation Guy website. So if you want to see in more detail how they're done, then follow the links in the description below to take you there. It should save you trying to pause and restart the video as you try and read them off the screen. The automation is triggered by the sun trigger at sunset. I then add that negative offset I was talking about so that it's actually triggered 20 minutes before the sun is due to set. 
I don't have any conditions here. I want this automation to run regardless of whether or not we're home, away, on holiday, so it looks to baddies like the house is occupied. In the actions area, I then call the cover close service and tell it that I want it to do this for the snug and hallway blinds. I then have another action that turns on certain lights if either of us is home. I use an if action here to first check if any of the residents are home and also check that the kitchen lights are off. I don't want the lights changing their brightness or turning on in their pre-configured way if we've already got the lights switched on. If those conditions pass, it will then turn on a couple of lights. I've then duplicated this automation for the bedroom blind in our offices with just a couple of small differences. For the office automation, I check to make sure that someone is in there before I bother turning on the lights. I also use an if action to check if my key light is on or not. If my key light is on, then I'm probably on a work video call. It's super distracting to have the blinds start closing if I'm giving a presentation or trying to concentrate on what someone else is saying. If the key light is on, I use a wait for trigger to wait until the key light gets turned off before it continues closing the blind. If the key light isn't on, then it closes the blinds as normal. For the bedroom automation, I've added a condition to check that the blind is actually open before it runs any of the actions. If we go to bed early for some reason, or if someone is in bed having a nap or is sick, you don't want the lights coming on at sunset. If someone's gone to bed early, they're going to have already closed the blinds manually, so it doesn't run the automation. So now we know how to close the blinds automatically, what about opening them? Well, here's how I do it. For the triggers, I use a combination of time and motion. I want the blinds to open every day at 9am, regardless of whether anyone is home or not. I use a standard time trigger for this. I also want the blinds to open if we get up earlier than 9am, because you know, we have to work and stuff. I do this also by triggering the automation if any of the hallway motion sensors have detected motion. But I don't want the blinds to open every time someone walks into a hallway, so I've added a few conditions here to make sure that they don't constantly open. The first condition makes sure that the sun is up. I don't want the blinds automatically opening in the middle of the night. I also have a time condition here to check if it's after 6am. The sun comes up at half past four in the morning here in the summer. I don't want the blinds opening up that early either. And finally, I only want this automation to run once a day. So I use a state condition to check that a toggle is set to off. This toggle is set up in the helpers area of Home Assistant. It's basically a virtual switch that can be set to either on or off. When the automation runs, it checks this toggle to see if it's off. And if it is, it continues with the automation. The first action in the automation sets the toggle to on using the input boolean turn on service. This makes sure that the automation only ever runs once per day, and I use this in a lot of my automations. A different automation then runs at 3am every day to reset all of the triggers back to off using the input boolean turn off service so that they're ready again to run later that day. Back to our original blind opening automation. If these conditions all pass, it then calls the cover open service in the actions area and opens the snug and hallway blinds. I again have duplicated this automation so that our office blinds also open up automatically when we walk in there each morning. And those are the main blind automations that I use here in our house. The rest of the time we either use a voice assistant or a home assistant dashboard to control the blinds. There's a great hacks integration called the slider entity row integration that adds a slider to an entity. By adding this to a Home Assistant dashboard, you can adjust how far the blind opens or closes just by dragging your finger. I use this almost every morning on my bedside wall panel to open the blinds just a crack as I'm drinking coffee in bed and want just a little bit of natural light to come in. Those wall panels are pretty cool, huh? I'll be talking about them in a future video, so stay tuned. Other than that, there's really only one more blind automation that I use, and that's what I call my nap automation. It's triggered when my bed sensor detects that someone has gotten into bed for over a minute. It then closes the blind and turns out the lights so I can have a little afternoon kip. That's right, I've got a bed sensor, and that too will be the topic of a future video. If you find these kinds of things interesting, then why not subscribe to the channel so that you're notified when I release my next video, and then together we can make your home smarter.